this is Cookie Does Stuff and welcome to my tutorial for the new Christmas event Nico. Um, I've accidentally forgotten to start filming so I'll just quickly catch you up on what I've done. I've only done a little bit. Um, I'm making the bodice from an underbust pattern I have. It's the same pattern that I used for Cyber and Angel Rico. Um, I'm using this pinstripe black for the bottom section and this darkish red for the top section. It looks a little bit orange on camera, but it's pretty accurate to the color for Nico's top. Um, all I've done so far is I've put the darts in the different sections. You can see those bits started there. And I've just connected the two top and bottom parts for the back. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to trim this. I'm going to zigzag the edge to finish it. Um, and then I'll do the same thing for the shirt. So I've got the tops and bottoms on both the front and the back sewn together. As you can see, I've trimmed the seam and zigzagged over it to finish it. Next step will be sewing the front and back together. Um, now I'm not quite sure if I'm going to put a zip in yet or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the seams together but I'm going to leave one of them without a back stitch so that I can put a zip in it um, and then I will decide afterwards whether I need a zip or whether I should just go back and finish that seam properly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the shirt's sewn together. Um, I don't need a zip at the moment. I was able to just slide it on. But it's a bit saggy. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it in and I will add a zip to it and that way it stays up and it's pretty good. I'm happy, pretty happy with how it's looking so far. As you can see the back is sagging down quite a lot, um, which is why I need to take it in. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to put a quick little sneaky extra seam in each side to take it in um, and then I'm going to install a zip into it. So it looked like I was going to need to take it in about an inch on each side. Um, so what I'm doing is I've cut down the center back because I've decided that that's where I'd like to put my zip, not in the side, just so it's less visible in photos. And I'm going to take it in um, two inches on each side because technically when I was taking it in it was an inch but it was an inch folded. Um, so I need to take this in. So I'm basically just going to roll hem this. Um, I'm just going to sew this in two inches on each side and then install the zip into this seam. So it's been taken in now and as you can see it fits a lot nicer. I installed a zip into the centre back, which is how I'm getting it on and off. Um, next up I need to hem the top and then the bottom off it, um, I'm going to use pinking shears to make the scallops and I'm just going to fray check it. Um, and then all this shirt will need is some lace at the top. I'm considering adding straps to it but as you can see it does fit like pretty well. It doesn't want to go anywhere at the moment so but the back is a little bit a little bit sad. I really should have put boning in this but I don't have any boning and I don't have the time and money to go buy some because this is needing to be made in three days max so um, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna go ahead and hem the top of it, scallop the bottom and then I will have to go acquire some lapy, lacy. I will have to go acquire some lace for the top, but I think I might just paint some black lace that I, uh, some white lace that I already have. I took a look in my stash and I realized that I don't have any lace that'll work for the top off the bodice. Um, so what I'm gonna do instead, because I don't want to just leave it plain, is I thought I might actually just use number ten here. Uh, there's my finger. I thought I might just use this stitch number 10 um, and just use that to decorate the top of it. And I'm going to sew it at the same time as I sew the roll hem so it'll hold down the hem. Um, and as you can see I've got that all pinned so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I won't be going all the way to the end because I don't think my machine can handle doing that so I'm just going to hand sew down these little end bits instead. Update on the bodice. I've scalloped the bottom. Um, I just fray checked it and then went around with some pinking shears. I'll show you those in a second. And I added the trim to the top of it. Here's a better view of the scalloping and the um, trim detail. So 
here's what the scalloping looks like. You can kind of see the fray chick, but because this is dark fabric, it doesn't really show up. Um, so as you can see, there's just big scallops, and then I've used pinking shears to do the smaller parts. And at the top, like I mentioned I was going to do, I've used this scallop trim, which I think looks pretty nice. I think it looks pretty good in person. I think it's an alright substitute for the fact that I don't have the loopy lace trim. So here's the tools I used for the scalloping. I like to use this fray check. Um, I believe you can also use watered down Mod Podge. And the pinking shears I talked about, as you can see, they have blades that have these rounded scallops on them. So you just you cut round and it'll do all the work for you. So at this point my flatmate got home and I don't like to record voice when she's here so I'm just working on the collar. I just have a pretty basic collar pattern that I'm just folding up the edge off to make uh, a little bit pointier. I just sew around the edges and leave a bit free at the back to flip it inside out. Um, and I trim all the edges, I cut notches in all the curves. So, as you saw previously, I put the collar together. It's just a basic collar that I just sewed like a pillowcase and flipped inside out. And I did top stitch the top because I wanted it nice and flat and ironing wasn't really giving me what I wanted. And then I just added some fleece to the edge. And I just did this the same way you'd attach bias tape, and I used a smaller section at the end. Ideally I would have turned the corner, um, but the strip of fleece that I had was not long enough to do that, so I just put little bits. Um, I'll be closing this with a simple little button and loop. I won't bother showing that on film because it's super easy to do. And then for the uh, badge that goes on the front, I've started prepping that, so I have one circle here that I've used the pinking shears to scallop around the edges. Um, and then I have this bit on top, which I just used a craft knife and some tiny scissors to do the detail on. Um, it looks a little bit messy, but my plan is to outline it with a little bit of white paint, which will clean it up and make the edges a little more defined. Um, so this layer will go on top of this layer. As you can see, I've added one layer of paint. It'll take several layers of paint to get this opaque. And then I will add that onto there and add the fringe. And then it will just be attached to the front of the collar. Hello, it's day two of this project. Um, making some progress. Um, I've got my badge thingy ready to go and I've made the fringe for it which as you can see is just one piece that I painted and then cut up to a certain point and that'll be the point where I glue it on um, and then I also added the um, the loop and button to the inside of the collar so I'll glue the um, badge together and stick it on the front of this I'm not sure how I'm gonna stick it on yet I'm I think I'm just gonna hot glue it but it'll go right in the front here and then that'll be done um, I got my skirt cut and I've sewed and zigzagged the side hems. Um, I was a little low on fabric for this project, um, so what I've done is I got some scrap pieces of fabric from a friend that she had left over and I have enough to make the like side flap things but they're not going to be as big as the skirt, like the fabric I have isn't quite big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an elastic channel in the skirt and put the, front, uh, the fur on the end of that and do that all separately. So I need to make the hip flaps that go over the top and um, I don't have enough fabric to make them gathered so they will just be like solid curves that go on top. And I'm basically just going to, um, I'm going to have the skirt put together and then I will try it on me. And then I'm basically just going to tack the flaps down on top of it in a few different places so that um, when I put the skirt on, the bottom layer is still gathered, but the flaps will be set, they'll be like, you know, have at various points, they'll be tacked down so that they will still be flat on top. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to cut curves from this, add the um, fleece 
as it's as if it was bias and I will finish the top edge as well I'll roll hem that so that when I tack it down it's nice and finished and I'll add the fleece to the bottom of the skirt as well and add the elastic channel and then I will be back I figured I should probably quickly explain what I mean by attaching the fur like bias um, so the first thing I do is I just attach it this is the wrong side and this is the inside of the fleece and I'm just doing it um, uh, but good side to wrong side I guess um, and just sewing it along the edge so the edges basically match and then I flip it over so this is the good side and um, I fold the fur once so it's basically touching this inside bit and then I fold it again and I sew there so this is the good side of it now up so that's how I've been attaching the fleece on everything so here's how the skirt is looking I've got the flat parts pinned to the lower skirt and I'm just gonna tack it it's literally pinned in like maybe three places on each one but it's like as you can see holding up really nicely um, so I'm gonna tack those down and then the skirt will be done and I can move on to the sleeve puffs and as you can see I've also added the gold diamonds to the front I just painted them because I couldn't find any diamond shaped buttons in town so I just have the sleeves to make now and as you can see I've already worked on them um, this is just um, one strip of fabric ignore the overlocking because this is actually a scrap piece of fabric that I got from a friend um, it's just a tube and the piece that I have was actually cut a little bit like on a curve um, I think she had used it for like some sort of circle skirt or something um, so the piece of fabric I have was a curve and it was a little shorter on one end and a little longer on the other but I don't think that's super necessary if you want to make this you can just use a regular strip and I've just like haphazardly gathered it in the machine but just like pushing it through as I go um, and the bottom is gathered a little bit more than the top because the bottom section of my arm um, is smaller than the top part of my arm um, so the bottom is gathered a little more and the top is gathered a little less. Um, so I've sewn that and then you can see I've just sewn the two ends together and zigzagged it. And then I'm going ahead and adding fleece to the top and bottom the same way I have been previously. And then once that's done the sleeves are all done. Okay, so skirt is finished and all put together. And I've done the sleeves which I'm pretty happy with. My ribbons are all painted now and drying. I just put a thin line of gold on each side. As you can see, my ribbons are not exactly accurate. Um, this green, would I would prefer it to be this thickness. And obviously, I wasn't supposed to use pink. I was supposed to use red. But unfortunately, it is Christmas. And I went to maybe six different stores and none of them had the right thickness of green or the right reds um, literally I couldn't find any red ribbon in any size at all it was a problem for Snowy Mountain as well because my red ribbon had disappeared and I couldn't find anything to replace it so the fun thing about this paint is it actually has like micro glitter in it if you can see that it's super super pretty I would definitely recommend it it looks really lovely in photos alright this angle is going to be a little bit tricky because the lighting is too bad the other way facing my desk to show you this but I'm gonna quickly show you how I make bows so I have here a piece for one of the smaller bows what I do is first of all I fold it in half and press a little bit to give me a bit of an indent in the middle to show me where to go then I fold both ends in to where that indent is and I overlap it just a little bit Next, I take my needle and thread and I just loop it through a couple of times and make sure you get through both, get through all the, all the layers. 
So next what I do is I pinch in these ends, tie it up, um, and then I wrap this extra thread around a few times and tie it again. So there you have a finished bow. What I find for most Love Live bows, when the bow is this size, it doesn't usually have anything else. Like, it doesn't have the bit that goes across the front, and it doesn't usually have tails, though in this case it does, and I will show you how to make it look good on this small of a scale. Um, this bow is per the usual example of a Love Live bow, though, where it does not have the section that crosses in front. Instead, it has a gold bead on it. So for the tail, I have a slightly smaller piece, um, and what I do is I kind of fold it in half, and then I fold it, so I fold it in half like that, and then I fold it in half again. And what that leaves me with is if I pinch at this top part, you can see the tails sit nicely and they both sit forward. So then you just want to sew a couple of loops through this top pinched point, and then you can sew it to your little bow. So here we have the finished bow, um, and this will have a little gold button added to the front of it and will go on the garter. Now the difference you'll find with the large bows is once you've got the tails attached to them, you'll want to add the bit that goes around the center. Um, so you'll want a little piece of ribbon, um, and this one is not painted with gold either side because the reference is just plain. And you'll want to fold it. I usually find that um, the right proportion for a ribbon, you'll want to take the same one you use for the base and fold it in half. And then it's nice and simple. You just wrap it around the ribbon and make sure that the ends are at the back. Okay, so the pink ribbon, the last one that I'm working on, is going to be a little bit different. Because this ribbon, we don't want the tails to be flat. We want them to go over each side of my head. So what I'm doing is, instead of what I do with the other ones where I fold in half and then I fold it like that, instead I will just be finding the middle and gathering it in. And then I will just be putting the bow flat on top of it. So that it sits on my head out like that. And you'll see like this view from the front. Home stretch. Um, I have all of my bows put together and I have all the pieces to my badge. The very last thing I need to do is get the hot glue gun going. I need to hot glue some uh, gold button things to these small beads and then put some safety pins through the back so I can attach them to my garters. I need to put some safety pins through the backs of these two so that I can attach them to my hips. As you can see I've hand sewn on some bobby pins to the hair bows and I have a bunch of pom-poms here and I'm just gonna hot glue a couple pom-poms on each and then I need to assemble these three pieces like so and hot glue a safety pin to the backs of these and then this entire outfit will be done and I can try it on and show you guys here's the finished outfit I'm pretty happy with it as you can see I am wearing garters with it these are just garters that I happen to have from other cosplays. I've got my little pom-poms on my bow. I think that the pink bows look pretty good with the rest of the outfit. Um, and I've got my little hip bows and my little bows on my garters. And then I've also got bracelets. Um, these are not the bracelets I was going to use, but I can't find the ones I was going to use, so these ones will do. And I've also got some random gloves that I found in our hoard of various gloves and things from other cosplays. And I've got my Muse logo on my collar and fringe. I'm pretty happy with this. It's pretty cute. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials in future and art speed paints. And the next video that comes out will probably be my 2017 cosplay in review. I'm going to go through all of my cosplays that I've done and talk about how I felt wearing them, and some of the struggles of making them, and what my favourite parts were. Um, so look forward to that in future, and thank you for watching!